Hello and welcome to a special episode of the Yezu the Radio Show podcast short, where we go ahead and talk about a specific item that just is hot off the press or something you may need to know. Today's topic, the release of the FTM 150 firmware. That's for today on Monday, April 21st for the Yezu the Radio Show podcast short. And welcome everybody to the Yezu the Radio Show podcast short. I'm John Crook. And as I told you about today, today's topic of the Yezu the Radio Show podcast short is going to be the new firmware that was just released today for the FTM 150. That's right. The FTM 150 is our dual band, dual receive, dual display, duplex. That's right. VHF, UHF, full duplex for your satellite operators on there. Um, analog mobile. So it is analog. It's not digital in any way, shape or form. However, the FTM 150R has a great feature set on there, which is the ASP functionality on there, which does require the ASP chip on there. What that does that mean? What does it do? Well, it's the ASP is the Advanced Digital Signal Processor, which is going to go ahead and clean up some of that audio on there. And we'll kind of explain a little bit in today's short here. In addition to that, we are also going to talk about a new tagging feature for um, primary memory group or PMG functionality and the band scope, as well as going ahead and talking about a few minor other things. So that's for today's topic on here. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So the first thing we're going to do is talk about the ASP functionality on there. Now, if you have played with the ASP functionality on there, you're going to notice that ASP really does a great job of cleaning up the signal when it is a weak RF signal strength and weak audio. If you have strong RF signal or you have strong audio signal, the advanced digital signal processor, the ASP functionality on there, is not going to help. And in a way, and it could almost hinder on there. What a lot of people said, John, I wish there was a manual way it could turn it on. And then I wish there was an auto way it can turn it on. Because if you've been like me, you've had the 150 in the car, you've been driving places and you have a weak copy on the repeater or something because you're behind a hill or something like that, right? Then what ends up happening is the minute you get over that hill or get into a better area, maybe you're in better range of that repeater or that station you're talking to. The ASP on there really goes ahead and causes an issue. So we've had a lot of people say, John, can we can we have an auto function on there? Can we have some sort of way that we don't have to toggle it on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off? The answer is yes, we can. And that's with what today's firmware update is. So with the new firmware update, you're going to in essence have two modes of the ASP functionality, manual mode and auto mode. Manual mode is going to require you to push the SDX button. Push it once, it goes from the off state to the on state. Push it again, it goes from the on state for the SDX now to the SDX and ASP functionality on there. Push it one more time, it's going to turn it off. So basically, push it once to turn on SDX, push it once to turn on SDX and ASP, and push it a third time to turn it off. That is the manual mode on there. However, now we have the auto mode on there. And with the auto mode, is instead of pushing the button to toggle through the different states of it, you're going to push and hold the SDX key. And now what that does is by activating the ASP auto mode, what it's going to do is it's going to monitor the signal strength coming in to the receiver of the radio. Once it has gone ahead and deemed it at a certain level, then the ASP will function, excuse me, will turn on to function properly. Once it hits that signal strength again, it's going to go ahead and deactivate or turn itself off. No intervention from you at all, except for pushing and holding that DS, excuse me, the SDX button on there. Great feature for turning it on, turning it off on there if you want to do that. Now, the reason we have manual and auto mode, because we're going to get some questions about that, I know, is, is that sometimes people may be using it in a base station situation, and they may constantly need the ASP functionality to be turned on. That's where you would want to go ahead and utilize the manual mode. The auto mode, once again, is going to be if you're traveling with that radio, you're in a hilly terrain, you're something where there's going to be a lot of signal fluctuation, and you're going to want to have that ASP turned on at times, and you're going to have the one that that ASP turned off. This is where your auto mode versus your manual mode is going to come into play. Great feature, great functionality. I experienced that a lot. We have actually some UTVers, ATVers, outdoors people that have it in there, and they, 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 this was what they were saying on there. They're like, John, it's horrible. Man, I got the 150, and I'll be talking, and we'll get up to, I'll get up to the top of the hill. They'll go up to the top of the hill. 
will be a far away that we really want to use the ESP. And then all of a sudden it kind of hinders it. You know? Yeah, because it's that too si- strong of a signal, too strong of an audio. You got to turn it on and off. Not anymore. Not going to go ahead and be an issue on there. Now, the next function that we go ahead and talk about on there is going to be involving the PMG and the scope screens. Now, with the PMG and the scope screen, when you are pulling that into those operations, so you put something into the PMG, you put something into that scope screen on there, and usually it was taking the frequency information on there. So you had a hard time. I kind of treat my memories and radios like much how I go ahead and have my stuff in my cell phone, right? I take the person's name, I enter that telephone number on there for them. I don't have to remember a telephone number. In this case, I don't want to have to memorize the frequency. I want to know that this frequency with this tone and this setup is for that repeater or for that usage or whatever, whatever. That's why I put my name in there, the naming tag on there. Now you can pull those tags over to the PMG and the scope screen. So you can have it normally where it's going ahead and showing the frequency of usage on there or with the... PMG on or the scope screen on just doing a quick little key press on there. Boom. It's now going to go ahead and be to allow you to show you the tag or the quote unquote name of that memory channel on there. So great feature, great functionality. A lot of people like this from the people that have used PMG and have used it like in an MCOM setting or special event setting or station. They want to see the names of those frequencies. If they know that it's race two, or if it's going to be, uh, tax simp, whatever the name they chose on there, they want to see that name. They don't want to have to remember, oh, wait, that frequency is that one, and that frequency is that name. Yeah, that's going to go ahead and clear this up greatly on there. Now, our third feature that we added as part of this firmware has to do directly with the PMG, and it's more so of usage of saying, hey, is there still activity on that frequency monitoring in the PMG? So remember, PMG allows you to store five frequencies or five channels in there for sort of a quick access, quick monitoring of only those up to five frequencies or channels on there. With that, when there's activity and you are not looking at the display or you are not set on that channel or frequency you're monitoring, there's a little bar graph that will go ahead and raise up. In essence, it's like a signal strength meter. The lower the bar graph or smaller the bar graph, the weaker the signal, the higher the bar graph, the greater the signal. Now, with that setup and that configuration that we're talking about here, now what you're going to have in this case is is that you can set it for how long that bar is going to go ahead and stay on a display to let you know that there was a signal there. So anytime that there's a signal present on that PMG channel or frequency, it will go ahead and raise and fluctuate based on the usage. But once that signal goes away, now you can set it for either two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds to remain on that display, even though there's no signal there. Once you hit that timer, then that bar graph will go away and you will know that there was no traffic on there. Once again, great usage on there. I use PMG a lot in my car because when I travel, I only like to listen to a select group of frequencies or channels or whatever on there. I don't need to have, you know, all thousands of memory channels and everything like that on there. So as I'm driving by, now I can go ahead and say, okay, hey, or I'm in a special event or something. Hey, I wonder if there's activity. Oh, I see there was activity on PMG number two. Oh, guess what? I see it's there. Two seconds later, it disappears. I know. Guess what? It is gone. It is gone. It's not going to be there anymore. So great, great functionality to have in that radio on there, which is part of this firmware update also on there. So now, final question is, John, where can I get these firmware updates? Are there instructions? What do I do? How do I do it? Not to worry. Don't panic, folks. Go on over to our yezu.com website, okay? Yezu.com. You're going to go to the upper left corner. It's going to say products. Hover your mouse over there. It goes to drop down. Then you're going to look for VHF, UHF mobile. Select on that. Select on the picture of the FTM 150. That will take you to the landing page. Then what you're going to do is you're going to click on that files tab, and you're going to look for that firmware update. Inside that zip file for the firmware update, not only is it going to have the firmware files, but it's going to also have the PDF file that you need to review. Print that out. Keep that right next to you, folks. Be aware of it, everything like that, so you know how to do it correctly. And I'm going to tell you what, doing the firmware updates on the FTM 150, the 500, the 510, really super simple. You're not going to have a problem with it. And there are little other minor fixes in here, not necessarily feature sets on there. We don't list them because it's minor things that's not going to impact your operation. 
not going to impact anything that you are doing on the radio on there. I'm going to tell you what, though. Definitely go ahead and update your uh, firmware on the radio here. Some people say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. No, uh, the bad attitude to kind of have on there because when we issue a firmware update, we're issuing it for a specific purpose. Whether it is to fix something within the software of the radio or add new features as it is in this case here, plus do a little additional fixing on there. All right, important, important, important to do on there. Can't stress that enough on there. So that's for it on today's episode of the Azu Radio Show podcast short. We had a great time as always. Great information to get out on these little ones here. Something to just kind of have a little bit of tidbit on. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the short. And remember to always keep tuned to our regular Yezu the Radio Show podcast, which are released on Fridays on there. We will not be having one during Hamvention. But until then, everybody, take care, stay safe, and we'll catch you on down the log.